Hi, I'm Pam East, and today we're going to be talking about enamel removal. So what do you do when your enamel goes wrong? The first thing I'm going to say is, or ask you, is did it really go wrong? Or did you just not quite get the color you were expecting? If it's just that you didn't quite get the color you're expecting, my recommendation is stick it in a drawer and don't look at it for a month. And when you get it out, it might look a lot better. <laughs> Um, because de-enameling, it's like a last resort. I only de-enamel if the next stop is the scrap bin. That said, how can we get the enamel off? Well, I have a product called Denamel, which is its sole purpose is to remove enamel, and it is also a non-toxic product. So here's a piece that I'm going to de-enamel, and you're probably saying that's very pretty, you don't need to, and you're right. I am sacrificing a piece for the cause. Um, you need to understand that there is no such thing as selective de-enameling. It's all or nothing. You're going to take off every bit or you're not going to take any off. And so I need to take off the back as well as the front. I'll start by mixing this up. Now you can just use tap water to mix this up. You don't need distilled water. And I'm going to open up the jar and I'll put some into a dish and you want to add the um, you want to add the water slowly because it saturates very quickly so I'm going to put a little bit of water and I'm going to mix it and then I'm going to add a little water and I'm just going to kind of do it a drop at a time because it's surprising how quickly this saturates. I don't think I got quite enough in there to do the front and the back. So let me get a little more. These little lumps, if you've got a little lump on there, it just, they just break right up. So don't worry about that. That's better. And I don't pour water in. I do use a dropper because, as I said, it's easy to overshoot the mark. You want a, like a cake frosting consistency. It should not be runny at all. And I'm almost there. I think it just needs a couple more drops. Let me use the other end of this thing. I think the spatula side is going to work better. There we go. So you can see that it's, it's like a thick paste. It, it isn't going to run. And that's what I want. I don't want it dripping off the piece. So I'm going to start by putting the sum on the back. The reason I need it to not be runny is because I need to turn this over and have it stick. And you want to cover all the enamel. And I have it on there pretty thickly. Turn it over and I'm going to put it into the little trivet and I'm going to do the front. Now if the enamel is very thick, you may have to do this more than once. You might have to do it twice. Um, we'll see. I don't know. Sometimes it all pops off and sometimes I have to do a second, uh, a second run of it. I did try at one point, I thought maybe if I just heat it up and throw it in water without the denamel, it'll get the same effect. Well, the answer is no. <laughs> the it leaves a thin skin of enamel that will not come off. You only get all the enamel off if you use this product. All right, so that is ready to go into the kiln. I don't have to wait for it to dry. So the first thing I want you to notice is that I did pull the vent plug on my kiln. Um, if your kiln doesn't have a vent plug, it's okay, but you might get smoke coming out around the doors. This is going to be producing smoke. Don't let that alarm you. If you have a window, you may see fire. Also, don't let that alarm you. I promise it will be okay. So here we go. I'm going to put this in. And then we're going to time this for two minutes. Hey Siri, set timer for two minutes.
Okay, so it's been two minutes and I'm ready to take it out. I am going to put on eye protection, even though I wear glasses. Um, these don't have the side shields and this can splash hot material up when we, when we quench it. So go ahead and wear safety glasses. I'm going to be taking it from the kiln and I'm going to be putting it into a bucket of cold water and brace yourself. It's going to make a loud noise. <laughs> So here we go, and that will be the enamel cracking off. So it's all blackened, and all right, so let's see what we got. As I said, sometimes it all comes off in one shot, and sometimes it takes two tries, so let's see. And you do jump, jump the whole trivet in along with it, and it all came off. There we go. It's a little blackened, uh, and I'm going to fix that up right now. All right, so here it is out of the uh, a de -enam freshly de-enameled. And one thing you might notice is that there is a little damage to the metal from doing this. And that's not uncommon, and that's why I said you shouldn't do this unless it's a last resort. Um, if, if it's gonna, just going to go into the scrap bin anyway, there's no reason not to. But I wouldn't use it just because I wanted to change the color. Uh, I do want to have to do some work on it before I can re-enamel it. I'm going to start by cleaning it with the pre-enamel and a stiff wire brush. So I'm going to put a little of that um, pre-enamel on it and I'm going to and I'm going to brush it really well and I'm going to get all that black stuff off of it. And that's just um, soot that's on there left over from the process. And it comes off pretty easy. You can see it's already starting to come off. I may have to sprinkle it a couple of times to get it to clean up the way I want it. But the, the goal here is to get all the black stuff off. If you are cleaning it with a wire brush and cleaning it with a wire brush and you are not getting the black stuff off, you may need to redo the de-enameling. Uh, sometimes that's an indication that you did not get all of the enamel off. I notice some of the bronze is transferring onto this. I think I would use a steel brush instead of a bronze brush, but this will be okay. So once you get all of the char off of it, the next step is to refire it. And you do need to refire it before you re-enamel it. So I would put this into the um, kiln and fire it just like I did the first time, so like 1600, uh, 1600 for 30 minutes. And it should be white when it comes out. If it's not white, redo the de-enameling. Then tumble it, and then you can re-enamel it. I hope you've enjoyed learning how to remove unwanted enamel. And check the Cool Tools website for my other enameling products. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.